Gambit Bandit. Shouldn't you see bet an ace flop 100% of the time in a three-bet pot? No. There's almost, there's almost, there's very few situations, very few situations, especially in a three-bet pot where you have 100% C bet on a flop with your entire range. Very few. That's not a thing. You become really easy to play against if you always bet an ace flop. You do. I, I, I'm, I used to do that against a guy named Barry Greenstein because he always bet. And on ace high boards, all right, let's do 2.2. Puts you in tough spots when you get raised and they know you have your entirety of your range. It can be difficult to play. Ace Queen against Dan Smith. Fuck, I gotta go with him. This guy's a my man's a nutter butter over here. My boy Dan Smith. He's a little wild man. In every way. He's little, he's wild, and he's a man. You know? Alright, let's see now. Let's see. We're going to check this one. This is a mix. We check our overpairs here too. I'm not checking to fold this, by the way. Checking to check call or even check jam, honestly. Check jam is decent because, yeah, check jam is actually decent. Right? Because what is he going to have? He's not, he's not going to, oh, fuck, that's not a good card. Not an ideal card. Not a nine. A nine is a, not a good card. I was ready to get it in on the flop against a small bet. So now he can bet 10 jack. He can bet king jack suited, betting half pot. All right, puts us in a spot right here. All options available. Let me see. Fuck. Oh, fuck. I don't like it. I don't like the fold. I don't love that play. I don't hate it. Not sure if... That ace-queen. I was thinking... Because you know why you can check-raise the ace-queen on that flop? I need four deuce. Well... A lot of reasons, but because what does he do there if he has fucking sevens? Like, call it off. You know he can bet, but then if you just check jam, because I would check jam. Like, say I would check raise with my overpairs. So you got to do that sometimes with bluffs. That would have been a decent one. Yep, Michael Adamo. <laughs> of course, Michael Adamo gets it in. He's on ball at number four. So in for a hundred thousand already. Right? With plenty of time for him to continue to rebuy, and he will. You know, he'll go for it. Right now, like if it's all settled, said and done right now, obviously, it's not going to end this way, but he's in for 100000 If he min-cashes, the min-cash is 64000 So he loses money on a min-cash. But it's still a good decision. He's a good player. He's plus EV. Each bullet is individual, right? You don't think about the last one. You don't go, oh, man, why would you put 100000 in? Well, you put 25000 in. Then when you bust it, you have a new individual decision. Do I want to put 25000 in this? Irregardless of what just happened. And it's either plus EV or not. So for him, the three bullets that already happened, that's, that's in the past. The question is right now, is this profitable? And it is. So people, when people say, oh, how many rebuys are you going to do? Is it still okay? You're like, yeah. It, if you're plus EV on each bullet, you need to rebuy 20 times if you have to. All right. Let's get into the nitty gritty time. As the tournament progresses, every pot matters, every chip matters, more and more and more. Every decision matters more and more and more. As I said, once in a blue moon, I'll see a chat, whatever. We're getting to that stage now where a lot of the important stuff, this is crazy to say, right? A lot of the important stuff in terms of like, you know, theory happens in the first couple hours because that's when we play deep stack. Later on, the decisions are much more simplified much simpler so i don't need to think as deeply as i was in the early going you know what i mean like queen six off yeah that's just a fold what's the point of registering now if you only get 20 big blinds well the average stack is only 40 
and there's a whole bunch of dead money in here. So some people might just show up now. Some people, well, here's what you'll see. You'll see people buy in for 10 big blinds at the end. Absolutely. Got 20 bigs. All right, jack five of hearts. I'm gonna actually three bet this one. I know it sounds crazy, but we're gonna do it. Y'all like, what are you doing, Daniel? What the fuck is this? What's so stupid? What are you doing? Relax. I'm bluffing. We are running without the ball. We are hoping GoPro Warrior will do just that, which he did. See his attempt to steal? Pretty high, 57%. That means in the cutoff button in small blind, he is opening pretty wide. So every once in a while, throw him back in line. Plus, I rolled it, as the kids say. I rolled a very low number. So a three bettable number. And we're gonna do that occasionally. Lots of ways to build stacks, ladies and gentlemen. Every once in a while, you gotta take a risk. You know what I'm saying? This isn't one of them, I think. It's gonna be a limp. It's gonna be a limp and a call of 3x. If he makes it 3, 3.3, 3, we call. If he goes all in, we just fold. Understood? Okay. There's a seven. Let's see. Good luck, Nick the Wick. Thanks for the donation for the kids. Go to St. Uh, St. Jude Children's Hospital and the One Drop Foundation. All right, there's another seven. We're gonna lead this one for one. All right. Hopefully he has a jack or check back a king. Oh, he's raising. Well, that could be a buff. There's no point in re-raising. We're just going to take our time here. And then at this point, fuck it. Hope he bets. Well, the thing is we don't have a kicker. We have three sevens with a king jack. What beats us, right? Jack seven, king seven, queen seven, a seven, or seven six now. We're not folding against that range when we have a fucking seven. He's betting five. There's no point in raising. Ha ha. See why? No point in raising. Four high was not going to call. He's going to call me. The only thing he bets there, he's not betting a king. He's not betting a jack. So he's either betting a seven himself, a full house, or a bluff. So in those spots, very important concept. Hey, you only had 10 chips more. What's the difference? doesn't matter. Folding this one. Understand, it doesn't matter what he had left, right? Think about, if you, if you raise here, what is his range that, that calls? You think he bets a jack? No. Why would he do that after I call a turn? He's just going to check back, showdown value. King? He would never never bet a king there. Oh, he might. No, he wouldn't bet a king either. Not going to play it like that when I get up a seven. So all of his bullshit misses, right? Or maybe sometimes better hand than me. So I check raise, all in. He calls with, a, with the same hand, right? So we split. Or he calls when he beats me. That's not a that's not a value raise. That's called a value cut, or you cut your own your your value betting the, the like in a spot where your opponent ties you or beats you. Not good poker. Trust on that one. So I'm happy with 60 bigs now. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys understand that concept, right? Right. You got to think about okay. If I raise, okay, what is my opponent going to call with? Right? And if what your opponent is going to call with is at least as good as what you have or better, then it's not a raise. Because the bluffs don't call ever. So you're not getting value against that. And that was a perfect example of a spot where that makes sense when I had the three sevens. He just took the absolute bottom of his range and decided to bluff at me. Did Minfish. A6 of clubs from early. I'm gonna go ahead and min raise now because of Minfish's stack. Do, do, do. I would actually fold this up. Oh no, oh no, Jesus, six big mines more. Fuck! 
Six to win, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, we're getting two to one, fuck. <laughs> Six to win, 10, oh yeah, I have to call, damn. All right, what do you got? King, queen, maybe. King, king, all right, we got an ace. Okay, ace from space. There's the ace from space. Ace from space. Now let's have a spade or a heart. It's a club. Don't be a king. Don't be a king. Whew. Baby doll. We got lucky. Cannot fold there, ladies and gentlemen. Getting that price. We risk uh, six chips to win like 12. Your two to one dog, A6 suited, is fine against kings there. We also have to assume that he's doing that with king queen suited and stuff like that. All right. Very nice. Listen, I'll take it. A little bit of luck coming our way. You think I'm going to be upset about that? Oh, no. We, you know, poor guy got unlucky, but what do you want from us? I mean, we opened with A6 suited for two. He went all in for eight, right? So now there's two, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 out there. We got to call six more. So you're getting over two to one, which means in practice, you need to win with about 33% of the time with A6 suited. Does A6 suited win 33% of the time against the range that he jams with? Yeah. It certainly does, especially if you factor in any king-queen suiteds or like small pocket pairs. 2.3 from Dan Smith. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Okay, I'll call you, buddy. I'll call you, buddy. We'll go to break together. I got middle pin. What you got? What you got? So this is going to be a check call spot. Let's see. Yeah, just a check call. Dude, we don't really check raise this specific hand. If there was one diamond on board and we had like a three, let's say like queen three of diamonds, that might be a hand we check raise sometimes, not often. Just don't check raise often on king six three, period. All right, let's see now. Okay, 78. I'm gonna check this one more time. Well, we're checking to check call. All right, yeah. He could certainly be trappy here, right? With a king, he could have jacks, tens, nines, just ace high, but eh. We're not folding anyway. Kings and sixes with a queen. Now the question is, do we value bet or check it back? And we're going to value bet. Mm -hmm. The question is, what is a good value price? Three. Six, 1.8. I have to call a raise here too, which is brutal. Eh, do we? Hold on. Let me think. Little blocker bet kind of thing. This is, but this is one with value, right? We do have value because we do get called by some hands worse, right? Like if he has a three, if he had a deuce, some ace highs, he could call there. All right. Okay, this is going to be a 2.2 and fold to a three bet. And really risky because Adamo is, you know, aggressive to say the least. And we also had anti ninja jam fucking 60 bigs earlier. All right, go for it, Michael. You win. <laughs> I already feel I feel it coming, you know? Can you feel it? You feel Adamo jamming? I do. He's going to do it. Fuck, I told you. <laughs> I fucking I can't go with ace-3. It's just a bad hand. It's just an open and then a fold. Yeah. Okay. Fucking felt that one. Michael is trying to get some chips, man. Whoo, hot sucker. He's in for 100, right? No, he's not that. He's just playing his game. Okay, so we open there with the ace three. Just because you have somebody in the blinds that's gonna be overly aggressive, doesn't mean that you just don't open when you're supposed to, right? If we open correctly, he jams correctly, we call off correctly, we're okay. Ace three off is not correct to call that many picks. Again, because he could have any two cards and you're not in front. If he has an ace, Probably has better. Only ace two CB. If he's got a pocket pair, you know, you're dead to two outs. And then again, if he has like jack 10 suited, jack nine suited, you're literally flipping a coin. So there's not a lot of value in calling there with ace three off. The question is, how good of an ace would you need to call? Hmm. Better than a three. All right, we're going to open 2.2 once again. Unless Alex jams and we fold. Uh, all right, we can fold. 
Uh, just gonna limp here with the nine six suited. Call a small raise, not a jam. <laughs> Why am I looking at this hand right now? All right, that's interesting. Let me check this one. We got a flush draw, so we got something, something. Call. Let's hit that club. There it is. We're not going to win much money on this pot. I don't see how we're going to get a lot of chips in. Unless he has a three. I mean, hopefully he doesn't have ace three or king three. Or if he's made a flush too. If he made a flush, then we're in trouble. <laughs> a lot of time. We only beat a few, few flushes. All right, let's see. Do we want to bet this or check this? Block bet three, one point five. Small bet, if he raises, we can call he has a king, right? Yeah, sweet, okay. We were targeting specifically like a king. So for a small bet, he can call with a king because we could have a king uh, too big and we lose him. If we went too big there, we would have lost him. So what happened here? Button bet, big blind call, middle position call, check, check. Then I get 21, call, check, check. What? Oh, the queen paired. Jeez, no wonder. All right, couple of fives against an under-the-gun raise. Folding. Too juicy of a spot for a guy like Adamo with the fives, right? For him and 19 bigs. Like, he's, think about what he's going to be looking at. He's going to look at two, four, five, six bigs in there, right? 19 to win six or get called and have to, you know, suck out or whatever. So we're, we're, we're going to be a lot more careful generally at these stages with our flatting range so that we're not, so ex we're not too exploitable where we're flatting too often. And then people can start uh, jamming and squeezing and just like burning chips. You know, you're burning, burning chips. Again, super deep, but never fold that. Two fives. This can be a 2.2 open. Ah, uh, Damo. All right, phew. <laughs> hmm. Good result with Ace3 suited, right? Never going to complain when you win the pot that's there with an ace and a three. Never. You're not like, oh, man. Seven deuce. That can fold. Okay. Aces. We're going to 2.2 with this one. Do, 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 do. Under the gun. Come on. Come on, Auntie Ninja. Do your crazy. 60 bigs. Somebody. Somebody. Don't disappoint. Mm. Dan Smith on the button didn't want none? All right. Everybody's done. Okay, Lotto Larry, you're my last hope. Lotto Larry, you got 18 bigs, time to get some more. All right, we got some action. All right, we're gonna fire 40%. We can get this in if he has a 10. Ah, he did not. Okay, well, almost checked that one back too. Well, no. Sometimes I would check that back, is what I was going to say. Yeah, you really want to get those aces and kings late. Early on, level one, level two, it's like those are not the hands that win you big chips. They're the ones that lose you big stacks, right? You'd rather have those later in the event. And early on, have the fun hands. The flying colors. All right, this is an ace king against Adamo. Couple options. We are going to again. We we raise a very low percentage of hands from the from the small. Lot of Larry raising would be perfect. Off of fifteen. Okay, that's good. So now we can do. So this is uh. This is designed to look like what it did with Ace Eight, where we would fold to an Atomo Jam, which we obviously won't, and it commits us obviously against Lot of Larry, which we're good with. Good luck. Tens, okay, flip. Ace or king, people. Fuck, 
can. All right, whatever. Hmm. Nothing you can do there. Big paw, damn. All right, well, he had 15 bigs. All right, you gotta win flips, you know? Again, good news, we are still above average and we picked up the ace-10 suited. All right, pocket tens, okay. Such is life. We got Justin Bonomo jumping in, 17 bigs. Got ace 10 suited now against Dan Smith. I'm gonna flat. Ha <laughs> ha. Say ha ha. I'm gonna flat this one. Ace 10 suited. Alright. Focus in. Alright, that's a good flop. Top pair, top kicker. There are hands we lose to, right? Jacks, queens, kings. And three combos of aces. So Jack Swing sees that's 18. That's 21 combos that have us beat. There's also pocket fives and fours that are possible, but unlikely. So now the question is really like how we're going to proceed. I'm going to bet this sometimes. I'm going to check this sometimes. This one I'm going to check back. Tricky, tricky, sneaky, sneaky. Rolled a very low number. Okay. Okay. Now that's a card where if he has a heart in his hand, he could barrel twice. Say he has like King Jack with a heart. He may bet turn and bomb river if we let him. Let's see. Small bet. Okay. I'm going to call this small bet. And there's a 10. That's a beautiful fucking card because he's not going to give me credit for a lot of 10s to check back here. Right? There's less 10s now available because there's two of them out there. So there's, he's only going to think I'm going to play like suited 10s. And I check back flop, which eliminates a whole bunch. Now, I still don't beat a flush, so I can't exactly go bonkers. But he will bluff here more than you, you'd like. He's, he's going to try to bluff that. Oh, he's betting small. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a very thin raise in this position. Very thin. But he's betting small. All right, we take it. What was that bet? Was that a blocker? Was that? Huh, that's interesting. Very thin. But we beat some other 10s too, right? He's going to call off with a 10. Now we got King Jack suited. I'm going to flat this one, too. That's not going to be us. Probably not going to win this one. But there's always a way. Shit. Now Ace makes a straight, right? So what if we don't beat anything? I mean, I guess we beat. No, that's not true. But we're not gonna fucking. We're not putting another chip in this pot. I don't think. We might actually get to check turn and then bl bl bluff River. We could represent an Ace by the river if he doesn't have one. Maybe, maybe. We'll keep it in mind. In the realm of possibility. We will keep it in mind if he checks this river. He might get us for half pot. So what's there? It's three, 6.9. Yeah, we have to bluff this one time. All right, buddy. If you got it, you got it. I mean, it's a credible line with an ace. Yeah, sweet. We might have the best hand here, by the way. We might have had the best hand. He could have had worse. He could have king-queen, though. Yeah, I don't know. Might not have even needed to bet that. We might have just had the fucking best hand a lot. Showdown value. Like, if he has queen-jack suited, jack-10 suited, he's always calling with an ace, right? We assume that. If you have an ace, you win. What the fuck does he have, then? 
like an overpair? Do we, do we bluff out like sevens, eights, nines? I don't think so. I don't know what the fuck was going on there. I think we had the best hand. He might have had nine, ten fucking spades or something. Nine, ten of spades or something. So we are sitting pretty, y'all. I know it doesn't seem like it because you only have 66 bigs, but again, so we're at that stage of the tournament on bullet number one. Average is 44. We are the chip. We have the most chips at the table right now. It's going to be a 2.2 .2 open and a fold to a jam. If he jams, we just have to fold the fours. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm not going to call off with fours. What was the flop? Four? No, King Queen A. No sweat. Insta fold. I have bubble protection in, in the big 25K. Force people to show up on time, but most people do. I mean, a lot, a big percentage of people show up on time, so. Jack 10 suited. Folding to a jam here from Bonomo, unfortunately. 17 bigs. We cannot call off 16 to win uh, 21. Not quite enough with the guaranteed worst hand, the jack high. And he would do this with some... Mm. I, you know when you feel it? Feel it in here? Felt it. I can feel it sometimes. 15 to win. Yeah, too much. Okay, guys. We're, st you know... Again, he might have had a hand, but he could be just pushing the envelope, and that's okay. We've got two guys here that are well-known, Bonomo and Adamo. Well-known to put in a significant number of rebuys in these things. I'm not going to defend this king three. That's, this one is tough to play against and under the gun range, so we will let him take it with the king three. Not, not a drop of rain. Ace queen. All right, not a drop. It's still nice out. They did say Sunday night, so this is Sunday afternoon. Storm should hit tonight. Okay, this could be it. I mean, yeah, we probably get it in against both. Yeah, we got to get in against Bonomo for sure if he raises or jams or whatever he fucking does. If he opens, we raise. We just stick it in. If he limps, we raise, call off. All right, so we do. Boom, boom, boom. We call off. If he's limp raising, which he should, he's gonna do that with like ace nine suited and shit like that. We happily just fucking snap call. Okay, there's a top pair. I'm gonna check this one back. Uh, we're going to check this back and delay our C bet till the turn. All right, well, we're not folding. <laughs> I mean, it's not an ideal card. We don't have a heart in our hand. But, like, we just beat way too much shit, especially when we check back flop. If he happens to have two hearts, good luck to him. He's going to win fucking 19 big blinds. Might actually raise. Let's see. No, I'm going to flat. And then call off on river. All right, that's a good card. Unless he has a five. So if he bets, we just call. If he checks, we will value bet. If he goes all in, we have to call. Simple. Beat a whole bunch of fucking hands. King 10, King 9, 9, 10. Half pot, give him a price to call with a jack. And if he check raises, I still fucking pay this off, I think. Hold on, I gotta think. If he check raises, could he ever be fucking, yeah, I have too good of a hand. And I don't have a heart, which in this case is kinda good. Well, kinda good, kinda bad. He's thinking, he has a jack. Giving him three to one.
I think he calls with a jack, yeah. Jack with a 10. Booyakasha! Let's go. Sweet. That worked out pretty fucking good. We check back that flop, see? Give him a little something, something to hang himself, right? Because on the flop, I think he probably folds most of the time. But instead, we were able to pick up a turn bet from him and then a river call of half pot. 